I decided to fix myself breakfast this morning and something a little different and after digging through the refrigerator a while I finally came up with a mushroom omelet with baked beans over toast and uh, some smoked uh, herring on the side of it. And so uh, come go along with me on to make this mess now. <laughs> Uh, by the way, this is Friday morning and it's chilly outside. Uh, Ethel's already come and taken care of Frida's breakfast and I've gotten my shower over and everything and I've decided to make my own breakfast now. I've got the mushrooms on now, sauteing lightly in butter. They'll be ready in a second here. I already have the egg cooked here and ready for the mushrooms. Sliced a few little cherry tomatoes here to go on it. I kind of got a head start on it. Fold the omelet over there we go a little salt and pepper on it here on here put the baked beans on on the toast works just about right and you know what would be good on there Salt and pepper, of course. This be a garnish of free toast. to it. And I'll get my smoked uh, herring out. Well, here it is on the table, ready to eat and looks good. I'll tell you a story about it while I'm telling you about the, my breakfast. This all came about as a bicycle ride up in uh, Newfoundland, Canada, way up in the eastern corner of Canada. It's some place you go to, not through. Because it's the last thing before the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, it's a place several of them ever visited. And uh, but it has a lot of interesting things in it. But I was reading a book that I got, it's called The Boat That Wouldn't Float.
by a guy by the name of Farley Mowa from Canada. And it was the tale of him buying a boat that he imagined that he was going to sail the uh, coast along there and up the St. Lawrence, Lawrence River and everything like that. Except it turned out that the boat had one thing in mind and that was to kill him. And almost did it two or three times, but it, it's a good book. But it, he had such a bit of vivid description of the land and the people that I just had to go there to see it. So one time I boxed up my bike, hopped on Canada Air, and flew to St. John's, Labrador, or Newfoundland, or whatever it is. The places are so small up there, but it was the only airport there. And while I was there, I stayed at a bed and breakfast one night and this is the breakfast they serve the next morning. This is made with fresh mushrooms. You know, that's just pretty darn good. Easy to make. And the meat they had on there was kippers, smoked herring. I had some and I have loved it ever since. I, I like sardines, but this is one notch better than sardines and I just love it. I wish I could get free to like it. She likes salmon but not this. Well, I'm going to finish my breakfast, then I'm going to finish my story. The book I'm talking about, it's, it's, a, it's a very good book. I ordered a copy of it from used books and reread it and enjoyed it more the second time than the first. But anyway, uh, I was riding bicycles in those days and uh, I decided to go to this area and spend a week on a bicycle. So I boxed it up. Got on, uh, I lived in Oklahoma City at the time, got on Canada Air, which had a service there. And only two stops and plane changes later, and about 12 hours later, I was in St. John's, uh, Newfoundland. And uh, it was getting along toward sunset, so the first thing to do is find a place to stay. And I went around the corner to the main street there to the capital, and they had three hotels there. And one, I could tell that it was way out of my price range. It was only the place where people who spent other people's money would stay. And uh, the other one was uh, a little better, but not much. And down around the corner, I found one that was kind of run down, Motel 6 quality, and uh, Chase Riz Price, and stayed there. The thing that I remember about that, the air conditioner went clank, 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 clank. And I called the desk, and the guy came up, and he said, I'll move you to a room where it doesn't do that. He moved me to a room where it didn't run at all. But that's beside the point. The next day I started looking for a place to stay and I found down on the waterfront 
uh, some garish red cabins, each one about the size of a uh, one-car garage with one end of it up on the land at a walk and the other end sticking out over the over the ocean. With a porch on it and it had a crab and lobster trap and a fishing pole and uh, you could uh, catch your own dinner there and it had a little wood burning stove inside and a bed and and had a, a, a pot toilet, a toilet, not a bathroom, a toilet. And uh, the first time I used it, I looked and it, it dumped directly into the ocean below the back end of the building. But uh, it was, uh, they had five or six rooms there and a, and a bar and, and a restaurant and a ship store and they sold just about anything and everything there. and. Uh, so I decided that looked like a good place to settle and asked him if he had a room. He said, well, I don't, but the, uh, and he called the name of some ship and says, it's going to be out all night. You can have one of the, this mate's rooms. So it just don't mess with anything of his there. So, uh, I forget now what the room was, six or seven dollars, but it was cheap enough. But uh, went in the bar and I was introduced there to the national drink called Scree, which is a rum drink because it's, it's kind of like hot buttered rum, only ten times as strong. And uh, the two of those will put you in the flow on the floor. And uh, but anyway, dinner came along and it was a lobster and it was good and. I spent the night there and uh, the next night they moved me to a different cabin for a different person who wouldn't be there and uh, I spent two nights there and, and uh, in the meantime I was just riding around. Now all the settlements there were down on the waterfront hanging onto the rocks down there and they had little roads that wiggled back up on top of the uh, mesa sort of around there where the only road in the country was located and I was riding down one of those roads and came to this sign. And I just had to follow that sign. Couldn't couldn't pass that up. And it, Two, down, two miles down there, I came to the town of Dildo. Named from, for Captain Dildo, who settled a place in 16-something and what I like that. And they had a statue of him there, a wood-carved statue. And, uh, it had a club there named for him. and. Uh, it was a tourist place uh, where they got tourist dollars from you and it's kind of like the teepees and rattlesnake shows on Highway 66 to California used to be. But at any rate, uh, uh, a dildo <laughs> is actually the name of a wooden peg on a sailing ship that goes in a hole and a rope goes loops around it. But uh, it has come to be known by a different use and name, name since then. But the uh, little town of Dildo, it has its high spots. And it has its low spots and then it has its spots that I really wouldn't want to go. But uh, I found a uh, bed and breakfast there that looked really nice. Didn't have any rooms in, right then, and so I booked one for the night before, or the second night before I was to leave coming home. Because the night that I was to come home, the next morning, the, the flight left at 6.15 in the morning, which meant 
by the time I got there, box of bicycle got it checked in and whatnot, I was going to have to be there at 4 o'clock. So there wouldn't be many bed and breakfast that would be serving breakfast at that time. But on the morning that I was there, they made the breakfast that I had this morning. And uh, I've enjoyed it many times since, and uh, I wish I could get free to it to like it. But uh, it was only about a 12-hour flight home from there with two changes and whatnot. And I've always thought of that one bicycle ride that uh, I really enjoyed. And uh, that's the end of the world up there. There's three uh, commonwealths that are actually four, but they're all very small. And uh, you go there, you don't go to them. Uh, you go to them, but you don't go through them. There's no place to go once you get there except away. But uh, thanks for watching my video and enjoying breakfast with me. And <clears throat> Uh, God bless America, God bless Texas, and you folks have a great day.